Pokemon Conquest was one of my favorite Pokemon spin-offs. It's so cool! It's a Pokemon crossover game with Nobunaga's Ambition, a big-in-Japan tactical strategy game with 16 entries in its franchise. Several of them have been released in the West too, but they've never done as well over here. Hence, when Pokemon Conquest came out, I remember everyone saying it was a Pokemon crossover with Samurai Warriors, a hack-and-slash musu game which is made by the same folks, Koei. And so they used the same designs for their historic figures, like Nobunaga. And speaking of historic figures, yeah, Nobunaga's ambition and Samurai Warriors characters are based on real people for the most part. And that carries over into Pokemon Conquest. Nobunaga is still Oda Nobunaga, the famous demon king who is famous for uniting Japan through ruthless evil tactics. So yeah, he, yeah, of course he's the bad guy in Pokemon Conquest. But also, all of the generic soldiers you can get in Pokemon Conquest are also named after real people for the most part. By generic here, I mean they don't play a role in the story, and also there are multiple people who use the same artwork. For example, and I'm going to mispronounce some of these names, I tried, believe me when I say I tried, uh, but uh, for example, Kagekatsu, Shigazane, and Yoshitatsu, along with seven other characters, all use this character art. But each of those people are based on a real person, such as Katane Yoshitsugu, Date Shigazane, and Uesugi Kagekatsu. Even some of the women characters were real, some even actually warriors, like Mochizuki Chiyome, who formed an all-women ninja clan, the Kunoichi. Though most of the real women the characters are based on were just close family to the actual warlords and or they were aristocrats, rather than fighters themselves. Such as Irohahime and many of the other generic soldiers. Like most of the world at the time, Japan was very, The men go to die, the women stay home and wash the forks or something. I don't know women's mysterious ways. Though, just like our modern day armies with our automatic weapons and war machines, the Pokemon world evens the playing field by fighting via Pokemon. So in a world like this, yeah, of course you'd see a lot more women taking part in warfare, even kids. Ha! <laughs> oh, but anyway, the real world people used for the generic soldiers, for the most part, don't have any deep connection with why they were given the character art or the Pokemon they use. It was mostly just, this guy was a strategist. He gets the strategist art and a psychic type. This guy was a fully armored soldier, so give him the armored art and a high defense Pokemon. You know, things like that. But all of the warlords, the unique characters with a role in the story, likely do have deeper meaning behind their role and Pokemon of choice. But also maybe not. Find out along with me as we go through and explain every warlord in Pokemon Conquest. Look out, it's Boxu, today's sponsor! Always worth the glucose. Boxu is a premium monthly subscription box that sends you authentic Japanese snacks from traditional snack makers across Japan, many of which are over a century old. This month's theme was Summer Matsuri, and these are my highlights. So nice. So fancy laid out. I never I never make plates this nice looking for myself. I've never eaten food. <laughs> What's next? Oh yeah, the pancakes. pancakes! Pudding a la mode sand cookie? Tokyo chocolate banana langu de chat! I don't know what half of those words mean. I recognize animals. Choco Manaka! Are you intended to break it? Is it like a, it's like a Kit Kat, except significantly messier. It's polar bear ice. They, they, they squeezed a polar bear over some ice. These are really tasty. What even is this man? He's a pickle. Wait, that's not a pickle. See, that's the... What is it? I figured it out. It's wasabi. <laughs> Boxu makes an excellent gift, even if it's to yourself. And if you use the code LOXEDIN10 at the link in the description, you can get 10% off of your own Boxu subscription and save up to $47. Thanks a bunch. <laughs> it's wasabi root as a chip. Whew. We shall start, of course, with the main guy himself, Nobunaga, based on Oda Nobunaga. His main Pokémon is Zekrom, and later, Shiny Rayquaza. 
Being the big antagonist and based on a real demon king makes him having legendary Pokemon make perfect sense, especially dark, black, and draconic ones. It's a dead giveaway that you are an antagonist if this is the kind of stuff you surround yourself with. But also, Zekrom is the Pokemon of ideals. Its Pokedex says it assists those who want to build an ideal world. And that was Nobunaga's whole thing. He wanted to build an ideal world, one with a united Japan under his rule. And no people who don't swear their utmost loyalty to him. And that, of course, means no Buddhists, because they swear their loyalty to Buddha. And that's not Nobunaga, so they, they all get to die. Yeah, he was kind of a bad dude. Uh, but ideals are ideals, no matter how much truth there is lacking to them. So Zekrom it is. Now let's move on to No, Nobunaga's wife, who is based on his real wife, Nohime. At their wedding, Nobunaga described her as having the mind of a genius and the appearance of a goddess. Though, despite their marriage, she was believed to be infertile and Nobunaga sired children with various concubines instead. In Pokemon Conquest, she mainly uses Miss Magius and had a Drifloon now and then, and the designers certainly emphasized her beauty. There are also a few legends surrounding her, from being an excellent spy and counter-spy to becoming a spirit akin to the Yukiona upon death. Both of which may be why she's a ghost-type user. As for why Miss Magius specifically, well, witches are believed to be a major cause of infertility in various cultures all around the world. Oichi is a Jigglypuff user and is Nobunaga's sister. She's based on Oichi, a woman described as being famous for her honorable conduct, beauty, and determination. She is very intelligent and taller than most women. Nobunaga once stated, If Oichi was a man, she would make a fine warrior. So she's extremely caring, yet tough. Which makes Jigglypuff and Wigglytuff perfect partner Pokémon for her. Then, Masamune to me was the character I saw and immediately recognized from his Samurai Warriors counterpart. Which is fitting, as he also is one of Japan's most famous warriors. In Pokémon Conquest, he uses Braviary and Scyther. Notably, embellishing katana with mantises is fairly common, and he is based on Date Masamune, who was often called the One-Eyed Dragon of Oshu, due to the whole missing an eye thing. In Conquest, while he doesn't have a Dragon-type Pokémon, his warrior skill is called the One-Eyed Dragon to reference this. And the real Masamune, of course, had this famous helmet as well. Most of the Kabuto they show are actually extremely accurate, and only some of them are slightly exaggerated. They get kind of crazy. But anyway, Braviary is an excellent choice, as Date cared for and bred many falcons as a side hobby thing. He even regularly gifted falcons to other warlords. Aya is based on Aya Gozen, a noblewoman and half-sister of a warlord, Uesugi Kenshi. She lived in the Niigata Prefecture, which snows often and has ski resorts these days, which may be all there actually is to her ice typing. Her main Pokémon are Beartic and Frostlass, Frostlass being a ghostly woman in a nice kimono. Very similar to the one Aya wears, in fact many of these characters have outfits that perfectly resemble their Pokémon. But anyway, Frostlass's kimono is very nice and may point to her noblewoman origins. Her brother, Kenshin, who uses Gallade and Mewtwo... How does that work? Right, it's, it, it's completely non-canon. That's how it works. You don't need to think about it too hard. It's non-canon. Uh, well, he's based on Uesugi Kenshin. You see? It's a bit of a stretch, but they wear the same hat. Sorta. Uh, the real Kenshin was known as the Dragon of Echigo thanks to his prowess on the battlefield. So it's odd that in Pokémon he is a Psychic-type user. That could be because he was also known for being an extremely skillful negotiator and administrator of business and trade. Using those Psychic powers to get his way, I see. But also, he was trained as a Samurai. Not like a ninja, as his Pokémon depiction seems to hint at. However, in a hilarious turn of events, it turns out the way he supposedly died was by assassination. In fact, his assassination is considered the most famous ninja assassination in history, so making him a ninja is kind of... <laughs> It's hilarious in a super messed up kind of way. Plus, like, I get it, you know, in the real world, all of these warlords were trained as samurai, you know? So, in, in Samurai Warriors, and in Pokémon Conquest, and 
in Nobunaga's ambition, they gotta make their designs a little more interesting, so they have to have something to differentiate them, so this dude... He was killed by a ninja, and that is one of the most famous ninja facts. So, like, boom, he's a samurai ninja. You are what you eat, and he got a sword stabbed into his stomach. So he became a ninja. He's like, oh, this person got mauled to death by dogs, so let's make him a dog trainer in our cartoon. Like, ooh, yeah. Uh, anyway, Gallade works perfectly for anyone, really, because sword arms and ninja, samurai. The Mewtwo, though, expert negotiator. Ginchio is based on Tachibana Ginchio, the head of the Tachibana clan and daughter of Tachibana Dotsetsu, a powerful samurai who was known as the Lightning God. So fittingly, Ginchio here uses a Luxray, an electric-type Pokémon with sharp claws and fangs like her sword. Gracia is quite graceful and uses Masharna and Gothitel. She is based on Hosokawa Gracia, an aristocrat best known for her role as a political hostage and refusing to commit seppuku because she was a Christian, which may explain her more Western attire in this game and her using Gothitel. Also, her husband and clan would often wear all black. Her father is Mitsuhide, who uses a Lapras and an Articuno, and is based on Akachi Mitsuhide, the man who eventually killed Oda Nobunaga. Or, you know, forced him to kill himself. Uh, his name means wisdom, intellect, and reason, as well as light rays and gleaming. This is about all we got for why he has these Pokémon. Both are intelligent. In fact, Lapras's intelligence is among the highest. Plus, both of these Pokémon are very refined and high-class seeming, which is also fitting of Mitsuhide's whole demeanor. Motochika uses Duwat and is based on Chotsukabe Motochika. Though, considering he uses Duwat and Samurat who are themselves samurai otters, uh, really all that means is that he's a samurai. So, they, they could have just given these Pokémon to any of them, so I guess he's, he's a samurai from the place or they use water-type Pokémon, mostly. Hmm. Though, funnily enough, one of his more famous battles is known as the Battle of Watarigawa, which sounds like Water Agua. And it's the battle where he gained control of the Tosa province, a very coastal, fishing-heavy province. Muneshige uses Imolga and Staraptor, and is based on Tachibana Muneshige. At the time, he was considered the best samurai in Western Japan. Which, I mean, does make Staraptor a bit fitting. Sword-like talons, powerful bird of prey and all that. Plenty of samurai sword attack moves are named after birds. And plenty are lightning fast. Though despite that claim, not much is actually noted about him specifically. However, his clan was one of the first to make contact with Europeans, Portuguese trade ships specifically, and this might explain why his armor is much more European in style. Seemingly, anyway. Hanbei uses Pikachu and Mareep. He is very sleepy and sick, and also has the lowest power out of all of the warlords in the game. Which is all very fitting of his real-life counterpart, Takenaka Shigaharu, who also went by the name Hanbei. He was an expert tactician rather than much of a warrior, and also he had chronic tuberculosis, which eventually killed him early in life. And he's the same way in Nio too. Lovely. Now, Mareep makes sense. He's sleepy, counting sheep and all, but Pikachu... Oh, fun fact! Electricity was used to treat tuberculosis in the early days. Ha! Good enough. Someone needs Pikachu, after all, anyway. While still alive, Hanbei was the strategist for Toyotome Hideyoshi. Who is who Hideyoshi is based on? Hideyoshi uses Infernape primarily, which is fitting because his real nickname was Kozaru, which means little monkey. And later on, he uses Reshiram in reference to his role in Nobunaga's army. He was Nobunaga's greatest and most distinguished of generals, and as such, after Nobunaga died, he took over and finished unifying Japan. So a legendary Pokémon is fitting. Plus, he's often depicted wearing all white, so Reshiram just works. Also, just, just, just take a look at his real crazy armor. <laughs> the heck? 
Well, uh, the fire type of Reshiram and Infernape work well too. He was very skilled in his use of firearms. It's a big part of how he won, and under his rule, he demanded that factories get to work on outputting even more of them. And famously, he did love fire, often being entertained by fire jugglers and fire eaters at his parties. Kanbei is one of Hideyoshi's advisors, and despite the way he looks, he's actually the younger of the two. Well, the Litwick line of Pokémon do burn away at the nearest soul, so I guess that would cause some advanced aging over time. And partial white hair. He's based on Kuroda Yoshitaka, a strategist who is also a very spiritual man, a practicing Buddhist who is also always curious about learning of other beliefs and religions. He was even baptized into Christianity and even became a priest. However, not long after, he realized the danger this mindset could have as more daimyos converted. So he demanded all Christian samurai to abandon their faith, and he later adopted a monk's habit instead. So, a spiritual guy with Western influence. Lanterns and all that. It's fitting of a lampant. Hideyoshi's wife was Nene, an aristocrat also known as Kodaim, and who's represented in Pokémon Conquest as a Crobat and Krogunk user. While Nene herself was not a warrior, being an aristocrat and matriarch of the Toyotomi clan is a dangerous job, so in her possession was a famous sword, one named Mikazuki, meaning crescent moon, as the shape of its tempering pattern resembled a moon. And, you know, moons? Bats? The connection is clear. Ah, Hanzo! I don't even need to look this guy up, it's a Tori Hanzo! Famed ninja warrior who saved the life of, and later helped, Tokugawa Ieyasu become the leader of the newly united Japan after he and Ieyasu defected from Nobunaga. Using a Gengar and a Spiritomb is well fitting, as he is a ninja, but also Hanzo was nicknamed Oni no Hanzo, which means Hanzo the Demon and Spiritomb is said to be many evil spirits in one, basically a cluster of demons. Ieyasu in Conquest uses an Agron. Agron is perfect because of its power and its namesake, it's aggressive. And the aggressive nature of Ieyasu on the battlefield is often referenced in other media, like in Civilization IV. He was also known for successfully defending many forts and castles and even oversaw the expansion and fortification of Ido Castle, one of the biggest and most famous and well defended in Japan at the time well-fitting of the high-defense Agron. Tadakatsu uses Metagross, Steelix, and Dialga. Gosh, what a crazy combo. But like, he was a crazy man. He's based on Honda Tadakatsu, who has the craziest looking portrait in this video. He was known as the greatest samurai in Eastern Japan, and was also known as one of the four heavenly kings. Which I suppose Dialga would be too is one of the four Pokémon involved with the creation of the world. Now, being a high-defense Steel-type user is perfect, as he was a veteran of over 100 battles, and not once did he suffer a significant wound. His defense was unmatched. A real tank of a man. Ina is his daughter, and she is based on Komatsuhime. She was an Onamusha, a female warrior. Her main Pokémon Empoleon and Quagsire don't seem to relate to her much, though there is a village named after her father that serves traditional roasted salamander to tourists. Otherwise, some writing states that she was her father's greatest pride, and pride is mentioned frequently in Empoleon's Pokédex entries. Her brother-in-law is Yukimura, who is based on Sanada Yukimura, who went by many titles, such as the Crimson Demon of War and the Number One Warrior of Japan. His Pokémon are Tepig and Charizard and, oh wait, the Charmander line are also Salamanders, like Quagsire. And he's her brother-in-law, so I, I guess that connection to that village named after their father serving roasted salamander is a thing? Huh. Well, him being crimson specifically means he gets Charmeleon, and she gets the other one. So, there you go. Uh, anyway, this guy also is the poster child of the Samurai Warriors series, so of course he needs to have the poster child of fire-type Pokémon, Tepig. <laughs> But, but really though, because Tepig was at the time the newest Firestarter Pokémon, and Charizard is the original Firestarter, so here you go. He gets the two poster children of Fire-types. 
And then there's Kunoichi. Her name is literally just the term for a female ninja. It's like naming your kid Samurai or Grenadier. Oh, hi! My name is Barbara! I Arian. I'm a barbarian! I assume they just wanted another lady character and ran out of famous warrior women from the time. But also, some say Kunoichi would use scanty outfits and flashing tactics at their opponents to distract them or take them aback. Uh, I'm fighting a woman? So it's perfect. Bam! Scanty outfits for the young teen boys to gawk at. Anyway, there's a decent chance she's inspired by the Sanada Ten Braves, a legendary group of ninjas that worked for Sanada Yukimura, who, in conquest, she's connected to. So yeah, and she uses Scrafty and Revile because Dark-type ninja tactics. Kai is based on Kaihime, another Onamusha, and she uses Simiseer and Darmanitan. And according to the official chronicle of the Narita clan, she was praised as the most beautiful woman in Eastern Japan. Which is why she looks like this, I guess. Though, no historic depictions seem to exist. Lost in the flames of war, I suppose. Her use of Darmanitan is cool though. Darmanitan is based on a Daruma doll, which were first used later on in the same century that Kaihime lived, and first used in the same location. Both she and Ujiyasu were a part of the Hojo clan, which eventually became the Ganma prefecture, where Daruma dolls were first made in their iconic shape. And then Simiseer also works just because it's another red fire monkey, but it also does have fluffy hair. Now that Ujiyasu guy I mentioned, he is a Gigalith user, and is based on Hojo Ujiyasu, a warlord revered as a fearsome and cunning man, most famous for his strategies that finally defeated Takeda Shinjin and Usaduji Kenshin, despite their power and record. Also known as the Lion of Sagami, this man was gruff and rough around the edges, which ultimately is what gave him the edge in combat. And this may also be why in Conquest he has a Bulldor and Gigalith, two very rough-edged rock types. Shingen is a powerhouse of a warlord, using a Rhyperior and a Groudon. And rightfully, he is the honorable rival of Kenshin, just as their historic counterparts were. Shingen is Takeda Shingen. As a youngin, he was named Taro, a common enough pet name, but still fitting as it is a root vegetable in the ground. And he's all about his ground-type mon. And famously, at the siege of Masashi Matsuyama, he employed a large team of miners to dig under the castle defenses, rather than face them head-on with an all-out assault. And even his very first battle as a warlord saw him and his force pretend to be workers, claiming to be digging a moat around the castle to raise the castle's defense. But instead they dug paths under the walls for the soldiers to later take during the raid. So yeah, this dude likes the ground. Konetsugu uses Gardevoir and Alakazam, and is based on Naoe Konetsugu, whose helmet did indeed have the character for love right on there. And the Onmyoto he's holding are used in divination magic and astrology, which makes his pentagram-headed Alakazam and astra-projecting Karelian photography Gardevoir Curlia perfect as well. And also, he was known as being a very loving person indeed. For a warlord, that is. Uh, he never took the easy way out. He actually refused to send assassins to kill other warlords because there's no honor in that. Keiji uses Bastiodon, Raidon, and Terrakion, and is based on Maeda Keiji, a samurai famous for his wild personality, but mostly for his horse. His horse's name was Matsukaze. You see, the two of them were never seen apart, and his horse was perfect because of how large and strong it was. It was the only horse big and strong enough to be able to carry him, a very big man. Similarly, Keiji in Pokemon is a big man with a wild personality, and all of his main Pokemon are mountable ground types. One is even called Ride On, and was designed as a Pokemon that carries things. And Terrakion being a legendary horse thing would certainly be a powerful and strong mount, eh? Kotaro uses Zoroark and Hydreigen, and is based on Fuma Kotaro, the leader of the ninja Fuma clan. He's referenced in folklore and pop culture constantly. I mean, he was the leader of a real ninja clan, and ninjas are already surrounded in myth. He was considered a wind demon and was a rival to Hattori Hanzo, and clearly, Having a Pokemon of illusions is very fitting of an almost fantastical ninja. Magoichi, user of Carnivine and Sceptile, is based on Saika Magoichi, which was actually three dudes. 
in a trench coat. Just like Carnivine. <laughs> but no, actually, the leader of the Saika Iki would adopt the name, you see. The Ki province, where they are based, is now known as the Wakayama Prefecture, and is known for its beautiful forests and plant-filled canyons. And thus the people around this dude being mainly grass-type users is perfect. Motonari uses Superior and is based on Mori Motonari, who was known as a great strategist and feudal lord, though he became known as the Beggar Prince after he was banished from his family castle. Noble to homeless, overnight, just like that. Superior having elements of a noble prince in its design makes it well-fitting. Ranmaru is based on Mori Ranmaru, a pretty boy who was an attendant to Nobunaga, and his boy lover. In Pokemon, he's also the only male warrior in the side story, Ransei's Greatest Beauty. He uses a Dragonair, a sleek Pokemon known for its beauty, as well as a Lucario, which isn't known for that, but Lucario is known for its drive and wanting to train to become stronger. At one point in Pokemon Conquest, he is mistaken for a woman, which actually isn't unique in media depiction. Several of his depictions in other media makes this connection of him being mistaken for a woman, and in fact, Kamen Rider and Nobunaga the Fool both make him full-on actually a woman. Alright, fine, you can make warrior women as historically inaccurate as that is, but don't you dare point out that Nobunaga was bisexual. Okuni is based on Izumo no Okuni, the founder of Kabuki Theater. So that's really cool. But before she did that, she was a shrine maiden, which is a big part of Okuni's outfit in Conquest. She uses Volcarona and Scolipede. This connection could be based on the bright red colors and patterns on Scolipede. They sort of resemble the Kumadori, the villain's makeup style in Kabuki. And then Volcarona has quite a lot of Mothra mythos in its design origin, which does feature shrine maidens. Kiyomasa is one of the boys. He uses a fracture and is based on Kato Kiyomasa. Using the Dragon-type Haxorus is a bit of an odd choice at first, because he actually owned a monkey and would regularly hunt tigers, meaning Pokémon that were one of those would be a much better choice, you'd think. However, tigers often are used to symbolize the yin forces of the universe, while dragons represent the yang forces of the universe. And so, if hunting tigers is your biggest claim to fame, then that makes you an almost nega tiger, huh? So a dragon? Boom! The second boy is Mitsunari, and he uses Ponyard and Scizor, and is based on Ishida Mitsunari, who was both an army commander and a talented financial advisor. Wow. His use of these Pokémon could just be due to his red armor and being a warrior, though notably he also owned Ishida Sadamune a Tonto that today is considered a national treasure of Japan. And Ponyard has little Tonto hands. The last boy is Masanori. And just look at this kid, he thinks he's all tough and cool with his 1980s get up and attitude. He has the lowest wisdom stat in the game. <laughs> and I love that. He uses a Skaroopy and Crocodile and is based on Fukushima Masanori who was one of the younger warriors during the warring period, though not just a boy. His use of Skaroopy and the spear-snouted crocodile may be a reference to his use of the Nihongo Spear, a famous weapon, one of the three great spears of Japan. But also the use of the dark type could be a reference to his deception and cowardice, because as his army was losing at the Battle of Sekigahara, he swapped sides to the winning side and even continued to help them win. Yoshihiro uses Girder, and a Machop once, and he's based on Shimazu Yoshihiro. He likely uses these Pokémon because he was known for his army's strength as individuals rather than numbers or tactic advantages. His soldiers just had raw individual strength, once defeating an army of 37,000 soldiers with only 7,000 of his own. His troops came to be known as Shimazu Ogres which could be a way of looking at the ugly, ugly Conkelder line, and just the strength of them all. And lastly, it's Yoshimoto, who uses Pineko and is based on Imagawa Yoshimoto. Now, look at these two, and tell me why. I mean, I know that it's because that's how he looks in Samurai Warriors too. That's where all of these character designs come from. 
Uh, but, like, I guess that's also why he has a Paneko and a Foratress then, too, huh? Since he uses a magic ball in Samurai Warriors. Here he uses these ball Pokémon. Hmm. But why, in Samurai Warriors, then, take another generic Samurai Man and do this to him? I mean, I guess it does make him stand out more, and it adds another unique character, but I mean, historically... Oh... Okay, it turns out the guy was way into waka and no, forms of Japanese poetry and opera, respectively. He was such a big fan of them that they decided to make it his entire personality. I mean, <laughs> like, that's also kind of mean, I think. I mean, imagine if my legacy was that I was just some big Pokemon fan. <laughs> uh... <clears throat> Uh, well, I hope you liked this historic look into my favorite Pokemon spin-off. If I missed anything, which I assuredly did, let me know down below, and be sure to check out our other videos that explain a whole bunch of stuff all at once. They are a lot of fun. And until next time, never stop using your noggin.